Hey guys, I thought this was a fun problem. It was not. It is a long, tedious problem. So I thought if we look at this triangle, we can use Pythagorean theorem to find out this piece. And after we have this, we can use Pythagorean theorem to find out the rest of this and then just solve for X. Well, this is the method to do it, but it takes a whole lot of work. If you want to try this on your own, pause it right now because I'm going to solve it in three, two, one. So first step, we are going to do Pythagorean theorem right here. X minus three squared plus A squared equals 10 squared. We're trying to solve for A, so I'm going to subtract X minus three squared from both sides. On the left-hand side, we'll just have a squared. And on the right-hand side, we'll have 10 squared minus x minus three squared. And 10 squared is equal to 100. Next, we wanna multiply this x minus three squared. I'm gonna skip all those steps. It just gives us x squared minus six x plus nine. And then we wanna distribute this negative to all three of these. It'll give us negative x squared plus six x minus nine. And then we can combine like terms. This 100 minus nine is gonna be 91. And we can bring down the rest of this stuff. And after we square root both sides, we get a is equal to the square root of 91 minus x squared plus 6x. So let's update this a to be that. And now we're ready to do Pythagorean theorem for this larger triangle. It'll be x minus three squared plus x plus four squared equals all of this stuff squared. So now we gotta clean this thing up. Let's do the right-hand side first. This squared means this thing times itself. So we're gonna multiply the first two terms. So that's just gonna get rid of the square root. And then we'll multiply the x and the square root, which will be x times the square root. And then we have another x times square root. So now we have two of those. And then we're gonna multiply x times x, which is x squared. And since we have negative x squared and a positive x squared, those can cancel each other out. So this whole thing squared is gonna be equal to this. And now let's focus on the left-hand side. We're gonna do x minus three squared plus x plus four squared. For x minus three squared, we wanna multiply it by itself. That's gonna give us x squared minus six x plus nine. And for x plus four squared, we wanna multiply that by itself, and that's gonna give us x squared plus eight x plus 16. And now we can add these together. x squared plus x squared is two x squared. Negative six x plus eight x is two x and nine plus 16 is equal to 25. And that's gonna go right here. So looking at this, we have another square root. The only way we can get rid of this square root is to get this alone on one side and square both sides. So let's subtract six X from both sides and let's subtract 91 from both sides. So we'll bring down the two X squared. Two X minus six X is negative four X and 25 minus 91 is negative 66. And on the right hand side, we just have two X times the square root. Everything is divisible by two. So let's divide both sides by two. That'll give us X squared minus two X minus 33. And on the right hand side, these two twos will cancel giving us X times the square root. Now we're ready to square both sides. On the left-hand side, this squared is this times itself. There's no way I'm gonna go through all this math right now. It ends up being this right here. And then on the right-hand side, this square will go both to the X and to the square root. So we'll get X squared, and the square root and the square will cancel each other out. We're left with the stuff inside. And now let's distribute the X squared. It'll give us 91 X squared minus X to the fourth, plus six X cubed. For the next step, I wanna set our polynomial equal to zero. So let's take everything from this side and subtract it. So on the right-hand side, all this stuff is gonna cancel, so we just have zero. And on the left-hand side, X to the fourth plus X to the fourth is two X to the fourth. Negative four minus six will give us negative 10, and negative 62 minus 91 will give us negative 153. Now we have a polynomial equal to zero. Let's do this. If there are rational solutions to this, it would be one of the factors for 1089 divided by one of the factors of two. That's called the rational root theorem. So let's find all the factors of 1089. Well, I know that 1089 is equal to 33 squared, and 33 squared can be broken into primes of three times three times 11 times 11. So now we can find all the factors. So the first two factors are plus or minus one and plus or minus the number itself. That's true for any integer, one and the number itself will be factors. And now we have the three here, so we have plus or minus three, and then we can do three times three to give us plus or minus nine. And then we have the 11 here for plus or minus 11. And then we can do three times 11 to give us plus or minus 33. And then we can do three times three times 11, which is 99. And next would be 11 times 11, which is 121. And then we can do three times 121 to give us 363. These are all the factors of 1089. And then for the factors of two, it's just plus or minus one and plus or minus two. So now let's test out some of these factors. Let's copy down the polynomial and we're gonna do some long division. So first let's try X minus one. Here's all the work, I'm not gonna go through it right now, it'll take too long. But we can see there is a remainder, so we know that X minus one is not a factor. Next let's try X minus three. Here's all the work for this. Luckily for X minus three, we have a zero here. So we know that X minus three is one of the factors. So up here I'm gonna put an X minus three, and then the top part here is gonna be the other factor. And this is all still equal to zero. So this row is the same thing as this row. Now we can keep going with this piece inside here. So we'll do another long division. 
And this time, let's try x minus 9. After we do this long division, it also has a remainder, so we know x minus 9 is not a factor. Next, let's try x minus 11. And after we do this long division, we do have a zero remainder, so that means x minus 11 is a factor of this right here. And now that we have this broken down to a quadratic, we no longer need to guess factors. Let's bring down this x minus 3, and then this thing right here is going to be x minus 11 times this right here. And it's all still going to be equal to zero. Now we're almost done. Since this whole thing is equal to zero, we know either this equals zero, this equals zero, or this equals zero. Well, if this equals zero, that means x equals three. If this equals zero, that means x equals 11. And if this one equals zero, we're gonna have to use quadratic formula. Let's plug in two for both the a's. Let's plug in 18 for the b's. And let's plug in 33 for the c. 18 squared is equal to 324. Four times two times 33 is 264. And on bottom, two times two is equal to four. Under the square root, 324 minus 264 is 60. And we can rewrite square root of 60 as 2 root 15. The 18, the 2, and the 4 are all even, so we can reduce them all by 2. And then we can smush everything together. And this plus or minus really represents two different solutions, the plus version and the minus version. So to check our x's, we need our side lengths to all be positive. So for this one right here, negative 9 minus root 15 over 2, this is going to be a negative number which means it's not possible. And in fact, negative nine plus root 15 will also be a negative number, so this one isn't possible either. And for x equals three, if we plug in three right here, it's gonna give us zero. That would mean this side would have a length of zero. That's not possible, so this three is not a solution either. The only one that remains is 11. So let's try out the 11. Let's plug in 11 for all these x's, and let's simplify it. And this gives us 8, 15, 17, which is valid, and this gives us 6, 8, 10, which is valid. So x equals 11 is the answer to the question. Let's put a box around it. It's so like I told you, this was a very long problem. If you made it to the end, thank you. Comment your favorite color so I know who made it to the end. If you want to try more of these geometry challenge problems, I have this page on antimath.com. It shows all the challenges I've done so far with the videos. The link is in the description. How exciting.